Greetings, I'm Brian from RC Workboat Haven. Welcome to part two of the Fendure hull design experiment. Over the last two weeks, I finished this hull to the point where we can test it under power down at the lake. The hull turned out to be fairly traditional in appearance. The shape of the hull is what we have to test out. So let's get down to the water now and see what we've got here under power. Thanks for watching. Just a beautiful performing boat, I gotta say. Look at that. No listing port or starboard on these turns. Look at that. Stays, stays totally upright. I put a one pound weight on the starboard side on the deck. And I'm just pretending that that's perhaps a uh, superstructure, or it could be the pressure of the wind. There she is. So let's bring her through here. It still tracks in a straight line. I think the boat is very well balanced. So as you see it now, this boat has about five pounds internal weight and uh, two pounds on the deck. But she can certainly handle that extra weight up top at deck level. Whoa! We'll see how she'll act under sail in the next video. So now we've got the model back on the table. So let's see if we can analyze a little bit what the results were from this power test. Now the first thing I'd like to point out is the small size of this Fendure. It's only 24 inches on deck and compared to my trawler here, that's 34 inches on deck, so it makes a big difference in size. Now the trawler is powered by a 540 can DC motor, about 35 turns, and it pushes a single 42 millimeter diameter prop and has a large rudder. On the Fendure, I have the identical powertrain with that large prop, and I have a rudder that is almost the same size as this trawler. So that's a lot of rudder and a lot of power for this size hull. Now even though this uh, hull has a fairly uh, deep draft, it is a very easily driven form. And the power I had available to me was way too much for this uh, small model. In fact, I don't think I used more than half of the available RPMs during that uh, water test video. The shape of the hull will push a lot of water astern when the hull is pushed beyond hull speed. So a lot of the uh, video you see is the hull being pushed a little bit harder than it should be. But it did get me some interesting results. I commented uh, numerous times about the boat remained upright and stable while turning at high speed. And I believe most of the reason for that is the wide counter here because this area here is exactly where 
that wave buildup occurs and that holds the boat up steady on its keel as it turns. The large rudder allows the boat to turn almost on a dime instantly. It's likely too big, but it is an interesting feature for radio control. So overall, uh, if, if this hull was operated at a moderate speed, the, the boat has excellent characteristics and nice maneuverability close to the dock and so on. Here's a look at the uh, work I've done on the deck here on the Fendure model. I took the original opening for the uh, layout of the deck in order to construct the hull and I just basically built it up here and made a hatch combing out of it and made a hatch. The hatch is much too big and it really does detract from the appearance of the hull, but uh, it's still uh, an experiment after all and uh, I could modify it in the future. Right in here I have a piece of brass tubing that runs through the deck and that will be where the sheet line for the, for the boom goes uh, through when I do the uh, sailing version. Port and starboard, I have two small uh, cotter pins with a piece of string on the end, and that's to fasten down the hatch when she's out. And it just lifts off. And down here you can see the 42 millimeter prop and the rudder. I did uh, put the water line about 3 sixteenths of an inch higher than the original plan. And I do believe that uh, the weight I put in the boat was a little bit too much and that I could have probably uh, lightened up the interior ballast by one pound. But I'll be more careful in the sailing version. The main thing I was looking for with the power test was to see how she performed basically, whether it was overloaded or not, wasn't really uh, that big of a factor. But I do believe that would account for a lot of the uh, stern wave that we saw. And that, of course, that drag in here would reduce the speed and cleanliness of the, uh, the water exit and so on. Now, looking down at the interior of the boat, I have a uh, servo bulkhead, the servo, servo rod, the rudder uh, servo arm, a uh, rudder shaft tube with bearings on either end. It's lubricated and it's just the same as in my other build videos. In order to strengthen up the servo bulkhead, I incorporated that into my pod box, which just sits here. And here's the 540 can motor up here, universal joint. Three millimeter shaft, shaft tube with roller bearings in the end, lubricated. Now up forward, um, I've got a large uh, cylinder pin that I picked up from a farm supply place and it's one inch in diameter solid steel and uh, it weighs three pounds. I've located uh, a single motor mount high enough in the hull so that one inch can slide beneath it. But just under the, the uh, universal, there's another one pound weight and further aft just under the pod box, I have another one half pound weight of uh, square steel and uh, I can always remove any of these pieces here and so on and slide different formations of weights under the motor mount and all the way along the floor of the keel. Right now in terms of weight, I've got one, two, three, four and a half pounds of metal placed in the boat. Uh, I think that it was overweighted at that point really for the power test. So I believe that for a normal power version, you wouldn't need any more than maybe two and a half pounds ballast inside the boat along with the battery and so on. So that brings us to the end of this video. The power test with the Fendur was fairly successful. Don't miss part three. We're going to try the same hull under sail. Thanks for watching.